morning and welcome to Bloomberg Quint, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I'm Nita Chan. You're watching Indian Open. Let's go straight to the headlines at this hour. Piyush Goel has been given additional charge of the finance ministry in Arun Jaitley's absence. Goel will present the vote on account on February 1st. The telecom hemorrhage will end in 2019, says Airtel chairman Sunil Bharti Mittal in a chat with Bloomberg Quint. Anand Mahindra says the need to be seen as a local player has prompted Mahindra and Mahindra to set up assembly lines in new geographies like the US and South Africa. And in earnings, Yes Bank and Ultratech are the two nifty companies to come out with the quarterly numbers today. And frankly, there's just this whole bunch of mid-sized companies that will come out with numbers too and we'll watch out for all of those. Uh, first, just a very quick check at what the trade setup of the day is looking like. The world markets, uh, firstly, will come up on your screen what the US markets did in yesterday's session. Well, healthy, led by earnings, I think the US markets did reasonably okay for themselves and that's probably just uh, had a bit of an you know, has just assuaged the mood a little bit in the session today, if you will, because that that pie was pasted green and therefore the cuts on the Asian stocks are not too deep. Uh, less than a quarter of a percent for most indices. The SGX Nifty, in fact, which had fallen quite a bit, bit yesterday, is indicating uh, that there is a bit of an upside too that we may see. But it was fairly adverse. The last hour of trade that we saw, or last half an hour of trade, the late trade saw the market bit worse than the Nifty and the Nifty Bank completely collapse. So about a percent lower, but a lion's share <coughs> of that fall happened in the last half an hour to 45 minutes of trade yesterday. The market breadth was adverse. And there is a high probability that with the way Infosys and TCS started to correct and Wipro having done a large move already, there could be some pressure points on the Nifty IT as well. Yesterday was the first day it's near key resistance levels. But let's see, the worry point was that how TCS and Infosys reacted in the session yesterday. And therefore, if the markets have to hold on, I think the onus now falls on the three heavyweights, HDFC, HDFC Bank and Reliance Industries because IT looks jaded. Some of the consumption names have already made their moves on in, and ITC has corrected quite strongly. So the owners should be on these names to kind of hold out or maybe perform a little bit better for the Nifty to uh, hold out in the session. Uh, remember, amongst big news before we get to specific stocks to watch and I think this will dominate conversation today on First Word as well, uh, is that Piyush Goel has been named the Interim Finance Minister. I think that's the hottest piece of news. He is in the hot seat. He will present the vote on account as well. So. This remains the top on the table. As I said, a lot of conversations around that. Before we get started on those, let's just quickly tell you what are the stocks that are likely to be in focus today during the day and at, especially at 9.15. So ITC, by virtue of what happened yesterday, remains the big talking point. Volumes at 4.3 times the 20-day average. The delivery percentages were also fairly high, about 41%. So delivery-based selling seen in ITC and large delivery-based selling seen in ITC. So this remains the key one to monitor in the session today as well. Watch out for this one. It is a very disappointing quarter for Pity Light. Normally it doesn't feature this high up when there are a bunch of other numbers like Interglobe Aviation as well. But Pity Light, because of the fact that the margins contract quite significantly to 18.2% from 24% and the numbers are below estimates, I wouldn't be surprised if this reacts a bit. The word was out in the market yesterday and therefore the stock did react a little bit in the session yesterday itself ahead of the numbers. But let's wait and watch what happens today. It was a strong quarter from Ujjivan, I thought. And I think in the management call, the manage, uh, in the conference call, the management has said that the small finance bank would list by 2020. Do watch out for Jeevan Financial Services in the session today. Uh, United Spirits, net profit rose about 42 odd percent. There were some other components to this as well. Raw material costs were up a bit. Uh, um, uh, rather, the margins expanded to 190 bips to about 13.9 percent as well. Let's wait and watch what the reaction on United Spirits would be. Uh, Thirumala Chemicals, um, small stock, but bring it out because it was a howler of a quarter. Net profit fell about 77 percent. Margins fell to 8.2 percent from 23 percent. That's the kind of contraction that happened. The raw material costs were up about 62 percent as well. Let's see what happens here. And Persistent System is mulling a buyback. They're going to consider this proposal on January 27th. Let's see if there's a reaction on this one. Beaten down, out of shape for the last few weeks, months. Let's see if this finds some semblance of sanity. However, all of these stocks are likely to react today. But let's first tell you though, what's lined up on First Word. It's a collection of the top editorial stories that we bring to you. And it can't get bigger than uh, this one, Piyush Goel, has exactly seven days 
to get ready and present the vote on account on the 1st of February. That's an impact presentation anyway. We posed the question to former Finance Secretary S. Narayan and Sanjay Pugalia joins in as well to talk about that. Samit tells us then what cushioned the fall in Interglobe Aviation's third quarter profit numbers. Yash takes us through the ownership changes in Nifty on 50 stocks last quarter. And we hear out why Nariman Behravesh of IHS Market expects the Fed to hit the pause button for the next six months. Okay, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has named Railways Minister Piyush Goel as the Interim Finance Minister days before this government's last budget or the vote on account. Arun Jetli has undergone surgery in New York and has been advised at least two weeks rest. Goel will hold the additional charge of finance and corporate affairs and Jetli will be a minister without portfolio until he's able to resume work. In the meantime, as we said, Piyush Goel will present the vote on account on the 1st of February. To discuss the change in portfolios and whether it impacts the vote on account or the budget in pre presentation in any fashion whatsoever. Uh, let's uh, bring in and welcome in former Finance Secretary Mr. S. Narayan. He joins us right now on the phone line. Mr. Narayan, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, not that this has not happened in the last 12 months, but for such a development to take place just seven days before the vote on account, um, do you think it has a material impact, sir? No, Mr. Goyal has been looking after the finance portfolio ever since uh, uh, Mr. Jaitley went in for his earlier surgery. So he's very well familiar with what is happening inside the um, uh, finance department. So in a way, to bring him back in is to bring back familiarity with the, with the North Block uh, activities. And uh, I suppose if Mr. Jaitley is, uh, is indisposed, I mean, the government has to do something to bring in uh, somebody else because the voted account has to go on on the 1st of February. So I don't think it is, it is material in the sense of, uh, of uh, the content of what is going to be said. But uh, certainly I think everybody will be missing Mr. Jaitley here. Certainly true, sir. And as you said, I don't think he's a stranger to the high office in the Ministry of Finance because he shouldered this responsibility admirably, I believe, for three months while uh, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley underwent this uh, kidney transplant too. Uh, but when the government has made, or at least there have been some noises about how this may not necessarily remain just a normal vote on account, but slightly more than that, does it make the task uh, slightly more difficult and therefore what would you watch out for when when this vote on account come in, be, comes in because arguably that's probably that one thing that people would be watching out for when it comes to Piyush Goel. Okay, absolutely. I think this is the important point. It is going to, normally in an election year the budget remains a vote on account because it is left to the new government to vote in the expenditure for the whole year. But if uh, they do decide to do some allocations, financial allocations in the budget, there's nothing to stop them from doing that, provided they have the time to get that voted in Parliament. So there's nothing to prevent them doing that. If that is so, that would be quite a departure. I think everybody is watching what, what is going to be the approach. But certainly the indications that even Mr. Jaitley has been giving earlier is that there are concerns which have come out and which need to be addressed. And clearly that points out to something about uh, uh, the, the, the farm distress in the, in the farming sector. So there definitely there will be, there'll be announcements. Now, this, whether this announcement will come out of current year's budgetary allocation or will come out of a fresh uh, uh, allocation of funds in the, in the, after April, and that's a big question. That's a big question because in between there would also be the election code of conduct coming in. So I think there is a bit of a bit of a uncertainty here and a bit of a dilemma for the government that if they do want to do something for the farm uh, farm sector, uh, where would they do it? If they do it this year, then certainly it would affect the fiscal deficit, which is already getting a little bit strained. True. Uh, or if they take the chance and say that okay, we will allow the fiscal deficit to to a slip next year, then that again becomes a big decision. That's true. Well, let's welcome in Sanjay Pugalia. He's the editorial director at Quintillion Media also on this conversation. Sanjay, good morning and thank you so much for taking this call this early. Normally, uh, because of what Piyush Goel has done in the interim when Arun Jetli went for the kidney transplant, this would have been viewed as business as usual. But do you view it business as usual, considering that we are just seven days away from the vote on account and there have been enough noises made that this may not be a normal budget 
but a not normal vote on account but maybe slightly more than that yeah two things basically uh, mr jetli has to now take some more uh, days before he recovers from his surgery so uh, interim budget has to be presented by someone else so even though finance ministry has two minister of uh, state ministers of finance uh, uh, the government has chosen uh, mr piyush goel to do the job so it is purely an interim arrangement and as far as uh, the possible announcements are concerned this change uh, doesn't make any difference the government is already working on certain major announcements which may not have an impact on the balance sheet side i mean it is a technical exercise that you have to take a vote and account for next 3 months or 4 months whatever period you choose and uh, then the next government will come and present the full budget which will have a serious implication on the uh, total balance sheet numbers uh, but nothing nothing stops this government from making major announcements and because we are just getting into election and it is on 1st february and the model code of conduct will kick in only in march first week so government will definitely make bigger announcements it will also make noises that we are not tinkering with uh, fiscal deficit numbers so f- from where the money will come will be a question that we will ask and budget will not answer what budget will tell you is a big uh, b- package for msme uh, some big uh, ego massage for middle class via t- some tax uh, concessions uh, it will definitely the biggest announcement will come about farm distress and you may see some kind of announcement of cash transfer so big on announcement but they i hope will not violate uh, the vote on account side which is a technical exercise true okay and before i take in the final thoughts from mr uh, mr narayan um, sanjay just one follow up so would you presume that this this move will be seen as business as usual even though it comes at a critical time of the vote on account uh, mr yeah. mr goel filling in for mr jetley yeah it is a business uh, as usual absolutely continuity uh, there is no uh, major change of stance because of the change in the individual in any case uh, the core ideas of the budget uh, must have already been formalized at the highest level and why mr goel has been brought in because it is a big political uh, a big day when you are going to make your political and policy stance mm-hmm. clear so you want a more articulate uh, media savvy minister to field the media questions soon after the budget is presented mm. well uh, that's a fair point to uh, mr narayan one final thought anything anything unusual or anything um, else that you would expect uh, to happen in this interim it's just uh, apparently a very short period before uh, or at least seemingly so before mr jetley comes back in charge but anything else that you would be watching out for sir Uh, except that you know these announcements that are being talked about are these announcements going to be backed by figures in in the interim budget are they going to expend and then you have a question of fiscal deficit of revenues etc i think that is what i will be watching out for if they are merely announcement i'm not even sure whether the voters will buy these announcements as just a promise because then they will wait for the elections so uh, i would say that is what i'll be watching for what is it that they are going to say which they are going to back with action oh well, yeah okay so business as usual when it comes to the change at the top seat uh, but uh, none of both of our experts pretty sanguine about uh, that at least uh, gentlemen thank you so much uh, mr puglia mr narayan thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us today well uh, that's the big announcement that happened now let's focus on the here and now lots of result reactions we'll see i already told you about united spirits below estimates i already told you about pitilite below estimates and both of those stocks could react today maybe not so much for united spirits but pitilite for sure interglobe aviation is the other one which came out just after market hours and saw a sharp decline in profits in the third quarter but the other income and foreign exchange gains meant that the fall wasn't as bad as the bloomberg terminal estimates were besides the airline returned to profitability after the loss incurred in the september quarter so not so bad or bad or difficult to say somen 
it's actually difficult to say because I had, as I was telling you yesterday, the uh, estimates, if you see, there's a lot of gap uh, variance that is there in the estimates and that's the reason it's very difficult to say how the numbers were when compared to the estimates. But compared to last year, the numbers were a bit muted because of higher foreign, uh, because of a higher fuel cost and because of a weaker rupee that we had seen in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Now, if we see the company's revenue, though they were higher by nearly 28%, the EBITDA declined by nearly 19% and this put pressure on the company's margins as they contracted to close to 20.2% in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Now, the net profit of the company, that declined nearly 75% to close to 191 crore rupees. However, compared to last quarter, that is the second quarter of financial year 2019, the company did manage to report profits on the back of no tax expense, higher other income and a higher foreign exchange gains seen in the third quarter. Now, other income was higher by nearly 36% compared to last year in this quarter, while the foreign exchange gains were higher by nearly 29%. Now, these foreign exchange gains were marked to market gains, which means that it is just a book entry and they have still not realized these gains and we'll have to see how that pans out in the last quarter. So that is one thing that one needs to keep an eye out for. And if you see the tax expense in this quarter, there was no tax expense for the company and that was because they suffered, a, because Indigo suffered a big loss in the second quarter which helped them avoid taxes in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Now on the operational front, if you see, the company's passenger load factor, now that declined by nearly 320 basis points to 85.3% due to lower passenger growth and a higher capacity. Now, in third quarter, compared to last year, the company increased its capacity by nearly 33% as against a passenger growth of only 24 to 25%. So, that's the reason the passenger load factor was down in this quarter. Now, if you see the unit metrics of the company, the company's revenue per available seat kilometer, now that declined by 3.6% to 3.7 rupees, again due to higher capacity and a lower traffic seen in the third quarter. A fuel cost per available seat kilometer, now that increased by nearly 27% to close to 1.57 rupees. However, the, this quantum of increase that we are seeing for Indigo is lower than the actual hike that we had seen in the fuel prices and that is because of the fuel efficient aircraft of Indigo that had come in in the third quarter. Lastly, the cost X fuel per available seat kilometer. Now that increased by nearly 5% to close to 2.04 rupees and that was because of higher other expenses and higher employee cost. Now, if you see in the conference call, the company did sound optimistic when it comes to the yields of the company. Now, they also said that their expenses were higher by nearly 270 crore rupees because of a weaker rupee. And they also said that the ticket pricing environment had improved in the third quarter and yields are still holding up post the third quarter. So, that was one positive announcement that had come in from the conference call of Indigo. Now, along with this, they also said that uh, along with this, they also said that they're in process of finding a new CEO for the company and going forward, they are planning to uh, expand aggressively on the international front as a lot of their future capacities will be deployed on the international front. So that is one another positive announcement that has come in from the conference call. Lastly, they said that in 2019, the company is expected to uh, receive a large number of A321S aircraft, which will be deployed towards the uh, international front because they have a higher seating capacity capacity, longer range, and they're more fuel efficient. So these are the few positive things that had come in from the conference call. But overall, if you see, the numbers were not that impressive when compared to few uh, brokerages like Morgan Stanley, SBI Cap Securities, Ilara Securities, or IDFC. But overall, they have managed to gain, uh, they have managed to come back in profit because of higher yields. And yields are holding up post Q3 was one po positive announcement that had come in from the conference call. Yeah, I think that's what uh, I think JP Morgan is saying as well, that the yield has delivered a beat and the management commentary is constructive on outlook, but they remain underweight. Yes. Okay. They, under they remain underweight because uh, oil prices, you know how they have been volatile and please the va also the valuations are better, more expensive for... So the, essentially the results have done nothing to change the outlook on the stock. As of now, On nothing. the positive side. As of now, nothing. As of now, nothing. Great. So, I mean, thanks. That is what I was watching out for. So, integral vision for all the uh, blue that may happen around at 9.15, precious little in terms of takeaways from the quarter, which may change the stance of a fund manager or otherwise. Uh, that is the word on Indigo. Uh, now, a couple of other pieces. The ownership of many Nifty 50 stocks will shift during the October to December quarter. The government sold stake in many state-run companies. Mutual funds put their money in the energy sector, while foreign institutional investors chose to bet on private banks. Yash Upadhyay has put together a list of the big changes in the shareholding pattern. Yash.
morning neeraj uh, so we've broken this up into three parts first we'll talk about the the promoter changes uh, in the nifty companies and we'll start with the top five increases so the companies wherein the promoters have uh, you know increased their existing holding in the in the december quarter uh, and uh, that includes the likes of gsw steel where the promoter holding has gone up uh, to 42.55 percent uh, up almost uh, you know 0.23 percent along with grassam industries indusin bank gale and sbi so the banking names uh, seeing a couple of uh, increase in interest so uh, that makes it for the top five names wherein uh, the promoters have increased but let's also take a look at the top five decreases in holding uh, and that includes the likes of uh, you know a uh, coal india where the promoters have sold close to 5.5 percent stake along with ntpc and indian oil so the energy names along with ongc uh, they have seen some selling coming in as well as access bank uh, where the promoters have reduced their holding by about 2.2 percent but it is these names though, which have seen a decrease in promoters uh, promoter holding uh, that have uh, Uh, you know found favor when it comes to the domestic institutional investors uh, so access bank and coal india they top the charts uh, access bank the, uh, the mutual funds have bought in close to 4.2% uh, sorry 3.9% uh, along with coal india where the promoters have, uh, where the where the mutual funds have increased their stake by about 3.6% uh, followed by ntpc indian oil and uh, upl as well so the mutual fund holding in upl now uh, stands at about 8.9% which is an increase of about 1.1% over the over the previous quarter and overall uh, for the nifty the mutual fund holding has increased by close to 1% in the december quarter uh, on a quarter on a quarter basis uh, similarly let's also take a look at the foreign institutional holdings and uh, they have significantly reduced their holding uh, when it comes uh, they've significantly increased their holding uh, sorry when it comes to the likes of dr reddy's wherein they've bought close to 3% stake uh, along with gale indusin bank as well as bharti infratel uh, wherein they have bought an additional 1.15% uh, stake so they have now hold close to 43% uh, in the company hero motor corp also finding favor so auto names uh, which were bit beaten down on account of the weak uh, auto sales uh, uh, hero motor corp stands out in that list however when it comes to the top 5 names wherein they have reduced the holding it is the three large uh, private sector banks uh, uh, which are going out so both uh, all yes bank axis bank and icici bank make up for the top 3 where they have uh, you know significantly trimmed their stake uh, most of uh, in in yes bank bank wherein they have reduced their holding by more than 3% uh, followed by access bank and icici bank grassam industries and bpcl uh, are the other two names rounding up the list of the top 5 names back to you thanks a lot for that yash uh, the last piece on first word today is ihs markets chief economist nariman behravesh who remains cautiously optimistic on the indian economy uh, though there are some concerns over the pace of reforms speaking with mainka doshi in davos he however points to the us china trade conflict as the biggest risk in 2019 listen in the key risk is a policy risk in other words the if if governments especially the us or china make a policy mistake vis-a-vis -vis trade that could be very damaging for the global economy if they come to their senses and and resolve this this trade conflict then i think we have a good shot at having reasonable growth not not exciting but reasonable growth in the global economy for 2019 but things are slowing not just this year but next year as well we'll see even slower growth globally um and so that's you know that's an issue okay. um the us continues to be a point of strength uh, it may not be growing as fast as it did last year right. but it continues to grow fast yes. um what do you think will be the outcome of the fact that even if growth were to moderate a little bit in the us especially because of the shutdown that shows no signs of unshutting down yeah. um but yet we also have the fed that sounds a little bit more dovish uh, than it did you know on the policy day at least the minutes yeah. sound more dovish uh and what are the implications then for the dollar because the currency markets will move on the anticipation of all of these changes no, that's right i think the fed is is concerned about two things one is of course the financial volatility that we saw recently but the other slowing global growth so they want to be sure they're not overdoing it although i mean even the interest rate hikes that we've seen so far US interest rates are still well below where they were 10 years ago. But I think the Fed has heard the markets, it's heard about slower growth. It'll probably pause for half a year is our best guess and then raise uh rates it's twice. twice. uh at the end of this year. Uh, and the reason is that you know unemployment rate close to a 50 year low, wage inflation beginning to creep upward. They can't ignore that. I mean it's that that's the reality of the US uh economy. But but they they they're listening to the markets, you know, they're paying attention. They don't want to upset the markets too much. 
Okay, so that means we see a stable to stronger dollar through the course of the year. I think that's exactly what the implication is. I don't know about strengthening dollar, but certainly a strong dollar. It'll re remain strong because the Fed's the only G7 country that's, uh, you know, the, the central bank that's raising interest rates. The U.S., as you said, stronger growth than most of the other G7 countries. So, yes, that does imply a strong dollar. What does that mean for capital flows, let's say, to economies like India or other emerging markets? Uh, you, we've seen some of the volatility feed into our markets yeah, yeah. last year. Will we continue to see that happen in 2019? Well, the good news, as you know, is in the second half of 2018, a lot of markets and a lot of investors became a little less pessimistic about emerging markets, a little more optimistic about emerging markets. We saw that in the currency movements. And so I think that'll probably continue uh, into, uh, into 2019. Uh, not as much downward pressure on uh, currencies, whether it's the rupee or other currencies. So in that sense, it'll be a It'll be better than, than last year, especially the beginning of last year. And so that's positive for the capital flows. Uh, so we'll see them going back into the emerging world, maybe not in a huge way, but at least in a positive way. Okay. And so then one final question. Uh, you've been looking at India from the outside. Uh, what do you make of where we stand in the economy? Yes, of course, people praise 7, 7.5% 7 growth as, you know, the fastest growing economy in the world, if not amongst the fastest. Yeah. Uh, but still, there are structural weaknesses in the country. So what's your view of India at this point in time? Well, I think I would say it's a cautiously optimistic view. I think growth has been good. You're absolutely right. Among the best in the world. But there are certainly concerns about the pace of reforms. And in particular, there's a fair amount of anxiety about the, the pressure, should we say, on the central bank. Uh, there's a little bit of worry about that. I mean, as you know, there's been a fair amount of pressure. So I think there is that sort of sense of, well, you know, what's really going on here? Uh, but by and large, the numbers speak for themselves and the growth has been good. Well, that's all that we have on first word today. Remember, a bunch of stocks will react and we'll talk about all of those. Intergroup aviation, maybe not as much, but Jivan Financial, very good. Uh, United Spirits, maybe not as great. ITC in focus as well. And then, of course, all the pullbacks that we're seeing in IT. So all of that will be spoken about a bit later on as we start the next leg. Uh, lots more lined up in terms of conversations as well on Indian Open. We discuss markets and macros with Chakri Lokpriya of TCG Asset Management. A special conversation from Davos with Sunil Mittal of Bharti Enterprises on why he thinks that the telecom hemorrhage will stop this year. And talk about metals with Rakesh Arora of Go India Advisors. But after this break, a full tilt towards the day's trade. One way to do that is to collect and celebrate the life lessons of those people. Deepak Ramola, the man behind Project Fuel. Fuel stands for forward the understanding of every life lesson. His audacious mission is to immortalize the wisdom of as many people as possible. One thing I was absolutely sure about, I don't want it to be a quote on the wall. I want people to experience so the experiential part is where we use different tools and mechanisms to create one act, and the act is of making lives count. Watch his exceptional story, pursued by Skoda, only on Bloomberg Quinn. हकीकत में गुड एंड सिंपल टैक्स है द फाइव हंड्रेड रुपी एंड थाउजेंड रुपी करेंसी नोट विल नो लॉन्गर बी लीगल टेंडर फ्रॉम मिड नाइट ऑन रोड Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quint. Good morning, Neeraj. Morning, Devina. Well, interesting day of trade simply because of all that we said. A lot of mid-sized yeah. companies, result reactions uh, to be monitored at a point of time when the SGX Nifty is showing that we'll actually bounce off 
from the weakness that we had yesterday. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, uh, carry forward trades from yesterday to see how they do. One being ITC, and, and it was actually a surprise to see the stock do what it did because while the numbers met street expectations, but then again, you go back to the point where. Uh, you need to beat the street expectation. And the other one being Vodafone Idea, because when they announced uh, their fundraising activities, that happened towards the fag end of when we were almost about to close, or rather, I think uh, just a few minutes left to close, and the stock already started to spike up about 2 to 3%. So, whether or not uh, you know that moves uh, further up in today's session or not. Yeah, so a bunch of stock reaction yeah. sessions. So, you know, the market might be slightly stable than yesterday. Yeah, for the SGX Nifty, we're showing you a quarter of a percent gain coming in this morning. Uh, 10,871 but remember it's it looked difficult to defend the 10,900 mark yesterday and the most technical analysts suggesting support levels of about 10,830 now which is exactly where we are placed at very close to that so if a break of that happens then we'll see which levels to target next but let's take a look at what happened in the futures and options space Agam Vakil is joining in this morning Agam. Well, uh, I'm going to start with the futures as usual and we were actually starting to see some traction coming through when it comes to the nifty futures. 3% added in open interest. Uh, it's uh, at least as far as uh, the previous few sessions are concerned, we really haven't seen so much of an accumulation coming through. Nifty banking futures also seeing accumulation of nearly 6% in OI. So shorts building into the system at this point in time, some weakness coming through. The India volatility index also rising, not as much, but still above the mark of 8 still a matter of concern when it comes to traders as long as it's above heady levels. Open interest distribution, we've seen a lot of unwinding yesterday in puts considering the nifty uh, coming off and I was talking about your 10,700, 800 and 900 puts where we did see considerable uh, you know, unwinding in puts. That also means that your op max op open interest now comes down to 10,500 on the lower end. Of course, on that upper end, we saw a lot of writing around the 11,000 call. Uh, so that's another option that we need to keep an eye on. Speaking of that change, uh, you know, this is exactly where I was talking about that activity in writing, considering the Nifty fell below the mark of 10,900. But let's move on and talk about uh, you know, your other variables. We have Jet Airways and Reliance Capital, which remains in the FNO band. Uh, we have Gen Irrigation, which enters the FNO band. On the other hand, Adani Power moves out of the band. So a lot of changes there. Your Nifty Put Call Ratio at 1.43, Bank Nifty Put Call Ratio at 1.0.86. And in terms of other stocks, we have ICICI Prudential and ITC clearly standing out in yesterday's day of trade. A lot of shots building into the system and a lot of weakness too when it's underlying. Apollo Hospitals remains flat but accumulation continues in that particular stock. Let's talk about those stocks which are seeing unwinding and KPIT Technologies and Reliance Capital do see some amount of traction. Of course, Reliance Cap currently in the FNO band. Should we see more unwinding, it may very well likely come out of the FNO band too. So watching out for those. But perhaps more importantly, some of those heavyweights which bear down on the Nifty yesterday, can we see a little bit of a reversal today? That's the question we're asking. Okay, let's try and figure out what happens to some of those. Talgum, thanks for that. Pathif Shah, director at Trackom Stock Brokers, joins us right now on the show. Could well start off with something that happened yesterday, but first let's talk about uh, a bunch of companies that are likely to react at 9.15 a.m. today. Pathif, good morning. A lot of stocks that will move. Let's start off with the result reactions that we are likely to see in some of the companies that on the reported front look weak. Starting off with Pidilite. Uh, the margin miss... Was it very grave or do you think uh, investors will, will kind of, you know, let it go because it could be a one-quarter phenomenon? Good morning, Neeraj. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely right. There was also some margins. I think we just uh, have Parthi on a slightly weak line. We'll just try and um, repatch that. But, you know, watch out for Pidilight because it doesn't look like it will have a good day in trade simply because the quantum of the miss on the operational front was much larger than what was anticipated. The stock was down about a couple of percentage points lower, but uh, you know the, the numbers are below estimates in terms of earnings and margins. Revenue front, I think they did okay. So the revenue number, sales growth of 19.8% YOI, wasn't bad. Uh, it was, a, I mean, the consumer and the bazaar segment grew. There was growth in the industrial segment of about six odd percent. So on that front, it was okay. But gross margins came off 620 basis points. Um, the crude derivative price is moving up. Now the question is, 
whether the street takes a view that those uh, those consolidated numbers or those average numbers uh, come off in the current quarter and therefore those margin misses might be a temporary ab aberration and there will be a pullback on the operational front in the quarter. I believe that that was how uh, the scene would pay out. But the 620 basis points miss and therefore the earnings miss that came in, does that lead to uh, a prolonged disappointment or a near-term disappointment? Difficult to say. So, you know, that's the first one, Pidilite, and definitely misses the mark and should be reacting in the session today. But the other one, Devina, would be United Spirits as well. Uh, optically, it was fine, but in, in the wake of what Radiko Ketan did on the gross margins front, and United Spirits uh, not approaching this result season with weakness. It's actually done reasonably okay in the build-up to can there be a large disappointment? That's the question mark. Mm. I mean, yesterday's session, we did have, uh, you know, one of our guests even talking about uh, this stock and, and within uh, this consumption space as a theme, the, the liquor prospects look much uh, better placed than the rest because of various factors, continued buying, volume growth, and, and where there is more stability of earnings that is expected to come in. But uh, we'll wait and watch as to what happens with United Spirits uh, this morning. Uh, that's another stock to watch out for. Watch out for what happens to Yes Bank ahead of numbers as well because that's going to be important to keep an eye out on as it reports its quarter three numbers today. Ahead of numbers though, the stock managed to pull, put up a good show, 2.5% two higher, 197 on the stock. We'll uh, talk to Parthiv about all of these stocks in just a few moments, but let's quickly go across to our research team, all of them standing by very patiently to run us through some more earnings that uh, came out uh, post-market hours, some stocks that are in the news, and lots more. So it's a full house. Um, I, Nikki, let's start off with you in Stocks News. Sure, I'm going to be addressing Ultratech numbers today. So, uh, second large cap company in cement space is going to be reporting numbers. Basic set of numbers uh, look healthy, but then uh, the, the key operating parameter, that's the EBITDA pattern and the realization, they pretty much remain weak. Uh, top line growth, we're expecting a 13.4% kind of a number. In terms of EBITDA, we're looking at a 12% growth, and margins are expected around that 16 17% kind of level. Profitability is seen up by 18%. Volume 2 is seen up by 11% mainly on account of the ramp up that we've seen in JP associates uh, the assets that have been acquired by the company realization and the EBITDA per ton they remain pretty much flattish realization we're looking at a number of 4,900 per ton and EBITDA that's a flattish number 800 per ton out there it's basically got to do with the fact that realization or the pricing power has remained pretty much elusive for all the cement companies in uh, northern as well as southern space because of which uh, that would have some bearing on the EBITDA per, EBITDA per ton performance of the company which will also to an extent be weighed down by the cost pressures two key parameters that we like to keep an eye out will be the pricing outlook and the demand growth commentary coming on that front and also input cost pressures given that we're witnessing some kind of receding trends for the industry as a whole all right Nikki thanks a lot for that that's ultra tech cement uh, I want to talk about Bharti Infratel first with Somit and then move on to the rest uh, what happened with that one well compared to last quarter if you see the numbers that Bharti Infratel <laughs> reported were very strong and ahead of the analyst estimates now if you see the revenue of the company though that marginally declined to close to 3640 crore rupees but the EBITDA of the company now that increased to close to 1500 crore rupees margins came at around 41.6 percent while the net profit that grew 8 percent to close to 641 crore rupees as against an expected decline in the third quarter of financial year 2019. Lastly, on the tenancy front, if you see on a net basis, 63 tenants exited while the average tenancy ratio for Bharti Infratel in the third quarter was close to 1.89 times. So what aided the numbers in this quarter? While revenue related to the exit charges, higher tower rentals and lower energy and operating costs helped the numbers of Bharti Infratel in the third quarter. Now if you see in the third quarter, the company received close to 54 crore rupees as exit charges. Now I wouldn't call this as a one-off for as they would continue to receive this in the coming quarters also but still this is not a part of the core revenue of Bharti Infratel so this was one factor that aided the numbers of Bharti Infratel now secondly if you see the rentals now that were higher by nearly 7% while the energy cost was lower in this quarter which aided the energy spreads in this quarter and that increased to around 8 
8.1 percent from 7.2 percent in the last quarter. Lastly, if you see, uh, similar to the earlier quarters, in this quarter also 2,744 tenants continue to pay despite serving exit notices in the third quarter. So the impact of this cancellation will come in in the fourth quarter of financial year 2019. However, the quantum of uh, quantum is still very low in this quarter compared to earlier quarters. So that will not be a much of an impact for Bharti Infadel. Lastly, the company will hold its conference call today in, in which the management commentary on tenancy addition, exit charges and additional 22,000 tenancy cancellations announced by Vodafone Idea will be the important things to watch out for from the conference calls. Okay, interesting. United Spirits, uh, optically, numbers look okay? Sure, they looked all right, but they were below expectations. Uh, let me start off with your revenues. The net sales rose 10%. Uh, your EBITDA margins also came in at around 13.9% against 12%, and profits rising 43%. However, it was a miss on all these three uh, well, headline numbers, and that's the reason why we there could perhaps be some amount of weakness coming through. We have to remember that there was an exceptional outgo in this particular quarter due to impairment loss that the company has taken. That said, gross margins were flat. There were some advantages coming out because of lower cost of uh, raw materials, and uh, in fact, if you take that as a revenue to uh, re uh, pardon me ratio to revenues, that stands at around 14.8 percent against 15.6 percent. Now, two key segments: it's prestige and about sales grew 16%, albeit on a weak base. This comprises of nearly 66% of the overall revenues for the company, but it's popular segment uh, where there has been, well, I would say relatively less focus. That has seen a decline of around 3% and 5% in priority states and possibly bearing down on the earnings. This, com this contributes to around 31% uh, to total revenues. So uh, on the back of the popular segment, some weakness seen, perhaps a miss when it comes to your overall numbers. Hmm, and a big miss for Pedilai too. That's right, uh, Devina. So it was an operationally weak quarter for the company. Uh, revenues came in higher than the estimates. Uh, they grew by about 20% to 1,848 crore rupees versus the expectation of 1,747 crores. Uh, but margins there took a big hit on account of the higher VAM prices as well as the depreciating rupee. So we had a bit of margins fall to 18.2% versus 24% in the same quarter last year. Net profit too came uh, came off by about 8.5% to 219 crore rupees uh, in the quarter. Also higher advertising uh, spends they took a uh, they weighed down on the profitability however key positive was the overall volume growth which came in at 11 percent the expectation was anywhere between 8 to 10 percent uh, it was lower again uh, because of the weakness in the industrial uh, uh, business where they saw a degrowth of volume by about two percent but overall higher raw material prices and depreciating rupee uh, they they had a negative bearing for pd light industries the management however is confident uh, that with the uh, with the cooling off of crude oil prices and rupee uh, you know stabilizing a uh, fourth quarter could likely be better but the stock is trading at a 12 month forward uh, earnings multiple of 59 times as against this five year average of 49 times so clearly the stock is very expensive and we could see some action in today's day of trade mm, and, and a bigger one at that thanks very much yash uh, some other mid cap numbers session that came out post yeah so most of them were disappointing first of all hathway cable and datacom uh, weak set of numbers uh, revenues were down almost uh, three percent but uh, it's the operational performance EBITDA was down 15 percent profit was down 73 percent so extremely weak set of numbers should react negatively. Ujjivan surprisingly was a very good set of numbers uh, this time around. Uh, total net interest income was up 30%, profit up 50%. Even though net interest margin was flat, the loan book growth book was up. Uh, so eventually even the management commentary in terms of what's expected, uh, the move to a small finance bank, all of them on the right side. So Ujjivan positive set of numbers. Thirumalai chemical weak set of numbers, revenues down 6%, uh, net profit down 77%, EBITDA down 69%. So very weak set of numbers should react negatively. Even Syntex plastic weak set of numbers, revenues down 17%, profit down 50%, margins at just 13%, so very weak set of numbers. And Everest Industries, okay set of numbers, but uh, still on the positive side. Uh, revenues up 5%, EBIT up 13%, and profit was up 22%, so should react positively. So, uh, so Ujjivan and Everest Industries on the positive side, the others on the negative side. All right. Thanks a lot for that, guys. Uh, lots of stocks there to keep an eye out on in terms of reactions that you would probably see in today's session. Uh, we've got Parthiv back with us. Parthiv, uh, a whole host of uh, mid-tier results. And I'll come to you with two, uh, one being United Spirits uh, and uh, the other one from the cement space also, and Ultratech Cement. How did you read into the numbers? Ultratech Cement will come out today. 
Yeah, firstly, regarding United Spirits, I think uh, see, it's it's a very difficult call to kind of uh, track this uh, particular company on a quarter to quarter basis, and I think won't uh, justify as well. Uh, but I think we've seen a decent correction in the stock, and more importantly, I think what I like about the strategy of the management is their focus on premiumization. So basically, as they mentioned, that the prestige and above segment, I think that's been growing well despite uh, because of the base impact. But nonetheless, I think that is the key focus area going ahead because. I think eventually, if they are able to sustain this growth levels in the premium segment, then probably I think we'd not be worrying about things like the gross margins and EBITDA that they report. So I think they definitely wish to create a separate category in terms of the premiumization. And I think it does take time. And I think there were some past legacy balance sheet issues and there were some auditor notes as well. Uh, but the cleanup is almost done. And uh, they have already kind of since ever since they have inherited the company, I think they have like uh, really reduced the debt. So so I think uh, my sense is that due to these numbers, if at all the stock were to further correct from levels of around 584, I think we would be long-term buyers. I think this is a great growth story. It's a consumption growth story. And frankly speaking, I think if, even if I were to give a multiple as compared to many of the FMCG peers, on a relative basis, it is still cheaper. No doubt the return ratios have a lot of scope to improve. So here, I think definitely I find uh, good value uh, on any declines. Um, I think talking about the upcoming results for Ultratech Cement, I think, yes, it's going to be a very, very important number. One of the peers we saw, which was Shree Cement, uh, which delivered stellar numbers in terms of the volume growth. All these cement companies, yes, certainly are finding a little difficult, challenging time in terms of the input cost pressure. Uh, but luckily, I think things like Petcoke has slightly cooled off. And I think such times make these companies even more efficient because they work on their cost metrics. But I think important uh, thing to view would be how the volume is ramping up and especially the the volume of all the acquisitions that they've done, how well that's ramping up, and any sort of commentary in terms of the Binani cement, uh, you know, what is the strategy going ahead on that is going to be key. But nonetheless, I think valuation wise, uh, this particular large cap name uh, is extremely expensive, but I think it's one of the best plays over the longer horizon based on the capacity it has. So I think, frankly speaking, in terms of investment thesis, I would still prefer a sort of a 5 to 10 percent correction, post which I think it will become a compelling buy. Okay, um, we'll talk about Pedilite. We'll also talk about ICSA Prudential, which cracked yesterday with Parthiv. And then maybe some ideas in which we can invest, uh, people can invest fresh money in. But it's 8.45, I request Parthiv to stay on. Just getting our technical experts on board to just uh, get a flavor of what to do in a scenario like this today. Brijesh Singh, technical analyst at Stock Access with us on the show in a bit. Nuresh Mirani, head of technical research at AMSEC would also be with us. Actually, he's with us as well. Jim and both of you, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Nuresh, it's, it's interesting what's happening the last few days, up a day, down the next. I'm guessing it's become difficult to take positional calls, but how are you approaching trade this morning? So essentially, over the last one and a half to two months, we've been around that 10,800 mark, plus minus 100, 150 points. So for the day, what we're looking at is, uh, we have a trend line support around 10,800. So expecting a bounce through those levels and a upside resistance at 10,920. So it would be a very strict 20-pointer stop loss at 10,800. Okay, but you would be... So with that stop loss, you would be looking to go long on the Nifty. I'm guessing uh, on the Nifty Bank too, you would not be bearish? Similarly, on the Bank Nifty, what we see is uh, we have supports around 27,100 and an upside to 27,500. So that could be the range for the day. Brijesh, uh, what is your approach to trade this morning? Are you initiating any longs or shorts on the indices? Good morning, Neeraj. See, from a past uh, six week, uh, what we have witnessed is that Nifty was trying to uh, break 11,000 odd level and uh, two swing high of that was 10,985 and recent swing was 10,987. So it was like, you know, uh, uh, what we say that Delhi abhi dhoor hai, 11,000 ke liye. And uh, what I've been looking is that Nifty was been trading in a very narrow range of 10,840 or say 10,850 on a downside followed by 10,950 or say 10,980 on a higher side. And yesterday on an hourly chart, we have seen that crack and Nifty made a low of 10,812 zone. And after that, um, uh, uh, post-closing was somewhere around 10,830 zone. 
and uh, since the dow and the then the european market or the us market has uh, seen the positive close and so we might open in a positive zone but that doesn't mean that uh, uh, 10985 would be crossing very easily so i would be on a short side rather than on a long side if anyhow nifty on a i'm uh, taking with the uh, spot value if nifty trades somewhere around 10890 or say 10900 one can look out for going short with the stop loss of 10985 and play for the target of 10 uh, 10700 or say 10720 the time frame to hold would be somewhere around a week time frame okay let's nail it down to specific stocks nuresh uh, if i were to ask you for a couple of stocks in which you would be comfortable doing a trade today which would those be so it would be a buy on access bank which has been uh, in a very strong formation and it is one of the few stocks which is closer to a 52 week high as well as an all time high and in the last 6 to 8 sessions it has made bottoms around 650 odd levels so that would be a buy with a stop loss at 649 and upside to 670 the other trade would be a sell on mahindra and mahindra which is now close to breaking a 52 week low and it has made a similar bottom in december also around 690s so if that breaks we could be looking towards a target price of much lower in the short term so looking at a short term target of 665 to start with and maybe lower in a stop loss at 705 mm. all right prijesh what about you your top calls see i'll go with the uh, yes bank no doubt today is a result but what i have witnessed is that the trend line breakout has been there and uh, uh, the previous thing has been broken so right now somewhere around 197 the stock got closed so we trade somewhere around 195 or below that one can look at to buy this counter with a strict stop loss of 185 and play for the target of 210 and the time frame to hold this counter would be 2 to 3 trading session and another counter would be petronet last time also uh, somewhere around 17th or 18th i have spoken on that that was trading somewhere around 2 uh, 220 zone now the stock has given close somewhere around 226 so uh, uh, present rate or any dip uh, below to, uh, 224 one can look out to buy this counter even the previous swing low of 210 has been holding uh, for by the increase in the volume so uh, one can look out to buy this counter with the strict stop loss of 219 right now uh with the target of 232 to 234 time frame to hold this counter would be 1 to 2 trading session okay a lots of stocks to keep an eye out on uh german stay on with us uh we'll come back to you with a lot of those queries there on stocks but turn to a special segment bloomberg edge where yash upadhyay tells us about a pattern that the bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a particular stock yash what's on the radar today Morning, Devina. So we are tracking DCB Bank on the charts, and uh, there's a sell signal coming on the back of the MACD indicator. Uh, let's first try and understand what it is. Uh, so the MACD is basically a trend-following momentum indicator. It shows you uh, the relationship between the two. two moving averages of price uh, how do you interpret it you go long uh, when the macd line crosses above uh, the signal line and you go short when the macd line crosses uh, uh, the the signal line from top to give a negative crosser which is uh, in the case of dcb bank so the blue line over here that you see in the lower panel uh, that has crossed below the white line which is the signal line to give a negative crossover now in in the last hour of trade yeah, so this is how uh, the crossover has formed now in the last day of trade Uh, we saw that the stock managed to erase all of its gains and just ended the day uh, flat and in the last two trading sessions it has been uh, falling by more than 1% on the back of higher than average volumes uh, with that uh, the stock is on track to post its first weekly loss in the last 6 weeks so over a week uh, it has been gaining and since then uh, so it has gone from the levels of about 150 to as high as 190 and now it has been cooling off and with the macd you know uh, giving a negative in, uh, you know crossover Uh, we could see some more pressure coming in for DCB Bank. Right. How well has this worked for DCB in the past? So they've been a three out of the last five times that the indicator has given a negative uh, call. Uh, you would expect a return of close to four, four and a half percent over the next ten trading sessions. Okay. Yes. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, so that's the Bloomberg Edge uh, for the day today from Yash Upadhyay. For um, another insight uh, via use of Bloomberg proprietary indicators, visit bloombergquid.com. wherein we identify technical triggers as i said that have emerged in a specific stock or a sector every single day on today's bloomberg edge we feature hdfc bank and what its open interest and price stability charts indicate remember that's a bq blue exclusive along with hdfc bank we also tell you something about grasim and why you should watch out for that stock so do log into the site and take advantage of that today interesting that you point out grasim and it would bring you back to vodafone idea 
and uh, the fundraising and, and in, you know, what would be the amount of money from the 25,000 crores that will be brought in from Vodafone Idea as well as the money that could be brought in from the Aditya Birla group as well. Yeah. Uh, Parthiv, come to you. Yesterday's session saw Vodafone Idea announcing a fundraising of about 25,000 crores. What does this mean for the company as well as uh, the ability of the company to raise that kind of money? See, I think the talk is uh, out of the 25,000 crore that they badly need because I think if I were to compare the peers, uh, Bharti Airtel is almost doing a 25,000 crore sort of an OPEX uh, and I think so is the case with Reliance Geo. Last quarter itself they did like 14,000 crore worth of uh, network expansion. So in that case, I think Vodafone Idea badly needs where the network quality is struggling and I think they're losing market share very rapidly. They badly need these funds to improve the network network quality for ad spends and all those uh, other things. So in the, which case, I think out of the 25,000 crore, the talk is that if Vodafone were to chip in around 11,000 crore and if uh, uh, Idea were to chip in somewhere around 7,500, 8,000 crore, uh, in which case the rest of the money comes from the retail shareholding. Uh, and they know for the fact it's going to be very difficult fundraising by the rights issue because the rights will have to be kind of coming in at a huge discount, dilutes a lot of equity and this is a huge amount of fundraising and still I think there's not much visibility in terms of how fast the company would be able to turn around and I think talking about the metrics in the telecom sector currently I think if uh, Reliance Geo which delivered around 130 ARP which is around two dollars and I think uh, the funny part is like this is globally one of the most cheapest uh, I think uh, telecom uh, space wherein I think in US uh, the minimum uh, telecom prices start at around 50 dollars a month uh, so I think see the delta but my sense is uh, and based on I think how the market share is consolidated between three large carriers which are owning almost 30-32% market share each. I think um, over the next two to three years there is no two ways about it. This 130 uh, rupees ARPU I think is certainly going up to 200-220. So I believe I think a lot of pricing pressure we already witnessed in the telecom uh, segment and this will certainly go up but nonetheless for Vodafone idea still I think it's going to be difficult times and I think uh, the impact X stock could be Grasim because uh, Grasim I think on a standalone basis great business cost is doing great vfs is doing great they have expansion plans in there they have that 65 percent stake in ultra tech but again if grassim were to kind of bail out idea by chipping that 8000 crore the key question mark lies how will that fundraising take place uh, so i think grassim could also get impacted with this news well watch out for these talks in the session today but if a couple of other ones and we'll make it quick just three minutes left for the markets to uh, start uh, a quick thought on Pity Light and how do you expect the stock to behave today? Neeraj, you're absolutely right. I think as you mentioned, pressure on the margins. But the saving grace was 11% volume growth on a base of only 20% volume growth. So I think this was something which made me feel that this is a very credible management. Uh, they are very smart. They know for the fact that Asian Paints is coming out aggressively with adhesive. Uh, Astral Poly is coming out aggressively with adhesive. So as compared to the past, now I think Pitylite does realize there are some fierce competitors. So I think they probably made a conscious efforts to let go the margins for one or two quarters, wherein they yeah, probably would have even landed up increasing their market share, which I believe is not really a bad strategy. Uh, so I think overall the volume numbers were excellent. Uh, the margin pressures I think could uh, re get recouped in the next quarter. But nonetheless, I think uh, at 59 times, I think this is a very, very pricey stock. And probably I think a new entry is difficult at current valuations. But if the stock were to correct uh, fiercely with these numbers, I think certainly then it merits a position in the portfolio. I think it would. And by fiercely, do you think that there is a possibility of a 4-5% kind of a cut today? See, I believe Neeraj, I think in terms of good, decent entry points, I would be very comfortable if we were to enter at around levels of 900, 950, which we did see when I think the crude prices were inching up. But market knows for the fact that next quarter, I think again, uh, the margins would again come back to around 20, 21% band. Uh, but I think valuations are a concern and no doubt they're growing well. But I think any time uh, in the course of time, the stock were to come back into three digits, I think that's the point in time where I feel that one can take an entry. All right, two minutes left to go. Uh, just a quick take on ITC, Nuresh. Yesterday's session saw a slump of about four odd percent. What does that do to price levels now? So what we look at ITC was actually, it gave a breakout about 288 to 90. 
it could not sustain over those levels and we are back to the support levels so over the last 3 months and over the last longer period also 270 and 260 have been support levels so 270 is a price point to watch out for that could be a support for the near term and we could again get back into this range of 270 to 295 mm. all right brijesh <clears throat> icici pro after the, uh, the 11% drop yesterday yesterday also when i was speaking to uh, darshan on a on a show i said that uh, icic pro has a support somewhere around 300 and 5 or 306 zone but if any rise uh, to the level of 370 uh, to 320 if it comes then one can go for a sell side with the stop loss of 332 and play for the target of 299 and below that so right now the stock is quoting at 305 so um, uh, if die added wants to go for a sell side then let it give bounce to a level of 310 then go for a sell side with the stop loss of 322 and a half and play for the target of 299 followed by 290 so it's not a sell right now wait for the stock to see a slight bit of a bounce back and then probably you can go ahead and and sell the stock target of 290 uh, on the stock icici pro 30 seconds left to go for market pre open lots more stocks to keep an eye out on and how open shapes up for now uh, the sgx nifty has held on to its quarter percent gain since morning so that's augering well we're hoping to see that uh, translate into a positive start for us Uh, the rest of Asia has picked up a bit, so you've got Shanghai, which is up about half and odd percent. Hang Seng is up a quarter of a percent. Uh, not so much so for the Nikkei 225, which is still down about half and odd percent. SGX Nifty at 10,867. Going to be watching out for those key big uh, contributors. Remember, Reliance Industries was missing in action yesterday, and so would the HDFC Twins to see whether or not they come back into action today. That's pre-open for you. <coughs> Reliance Industries there, <coughs> HDFC unchanged. And the Nifty itself uh, looks uh, flattish with a slight positive bias. HDFC Bank is up closer to a percent or so. Aside from that, uh, Gale has made a move right now. Bharti Infratel up one point. Okay, it's, it's fluctuating, but it's uh, closer to about six odd percent now. Kodak Mahindra Bank one percent higher. Bharti Airtel up one percent. ITC recovers a bit to two seventy nine on the stock. Yes Bank at one hundred and ninety nine. TCS a three quarters of percent higher. Tata Steel, BPCL, these are gaining anywhere between uh, a four tenths of a percent to about six tenths of a percent. Uh, Axis Bank is up one percent as well, but Bharti Infratel still hold, holds on to those six and a half percent gains right now. May see some change in a bit. Hindalco moves up, but George Fins up half a not percent coming in on that one. More gains than losses. Bajaj Auto a third of a percent, M and M half a percent, Adani Ports half a percent, and SPI too trades with gains of around half an odd percent. Uh, the the currency uh, 71.29, not a very material change from yesterday. Yeah, but the infratel is showing a sign of six percent. I doubt it will stay that way. But anyways, let's wait and watch. Actually, Partip tracks it very closely. We'll talk to him about that as well. I see, I see, Prudential is showing some upticks uh, right now. I, I doubt it will be a six percent uptick, frankly. But Well, let's wait and watch. Strange things happen in the market. Um, what's happened to Pedilite? What's happened to United Spirits? What's happened to Jeevan Financial? All these three names will come up. Pedilite, three and a half, half percent gash for now. Let's see if there is more in store. Uh, United Spirits, not so much, just about half a percent. And uh, Jeevan Financial Services, the quarter was good, seemed decent. Uh, they've spoken about the SFP listing in 2020. Uh, no big uh, reactions and. Uh, Interglobe Aviation well, has this 10% downtick. Um, again, I don't know if uh, I'll refer this question to Parthiv. I don't quite know if the results were so bad that it deserves this. Maybe this will change. This is the pre-open rates, but let's wait and watch what happens there. Frankly, I mean, I, I it didn't seem to me that the numbers were not known to be that the the, the kind of numbers that came out that will warrant this downtick. But let's wait and watch. What happens here as well? This might change. To be honest, I I don't know if it'll be a 10% downtick, but let's wait and watch. Yeah, we 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 saw the numbers. I mean, while the profits did come in higher than what the Bloomberg estimates were, I think 191 odd crores. 71, yeah. Uh, there there was an element of uh, the currency gains that came in. I think 103 odd crores uh, was from. But there. that was also compared to 80 crores in the corresponding yeah. quarter last yeah, year as the, well. Yeah, but you know the variation, and and Samit was highlighting that 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 the variation between analyst expectations is so wide. So wide. Really can't pin. point and tell whether it's been a good number or a bad number so to speak for uh, the counter but six and a half percent now yeah. 
uh, from changing. the 9% cut that we saw. I really doubt it at 10% downtick, but maybe it's I'm down wrong. down to and half now. Okay, great. Yeah, this is this is more a semblance of sanity for interglobe aviation. Okay, a couple of those numbers really. Um, uh, interglobe aviation, Pathiv, uh, what did you make of the numbers, and do the numbers provide any kind of trigger to a shareholder at all? See, Neeraj, what I felt was that uh, the numbers, especially in terms of the cost front, no doubt there was an increase. Uh, but I think we know for the fact that going ahead, I think crude prices have declined by 14%. Uh, the, uh, metrics, the metrics, which especially I think most of the analysts on the street, I think they love to calculate, is the uh, revenue per average seat kilometer, which was at uh, 3.8, which was slightly better than most of the consensus, uh, which is decent. But I think, Neeraj, it's very difficult to track these companies on a quarter on quarter basis, but I think it's very important to understand the underlying strategy behind this management. Yes, uh, eyebrows are raised, especially in terms of knowing that this particular airlines, I think is increased its market share by 3% over the last two quarters, is almost at 45%, is a market leader. I think people out of all the three prominent carriers would still prefer interglobe aviation, uh, also willing to pay some premium on their tickets. I think yet, why is the pricing power not there? And I I think it is a conscious efforts from the management in terms of having this slight predatory pricing wherein I think they are keeping pressure on their most important peer which is SpiceJet and also I think we have seen the troubles that Jet Airways has failed and I think Interglobe Aviation very smartly is trying to grab this market share at the cost of margins, which is fine. But going ahead, I think with this market share, and especially, uh, most importantly, their focus eventually going to be on the international route, where there is some competition, but I think with the NeoJet fleet, which can fly for six hours, I think they are planning something good and concrete. And uh, no doubt, I think they are going to appoint the, the new CEO. But I think this is one of the best airlines to play. It's a cash-rich company. And uh, going ahead, what my sense is that, you know, they will certainly have that pricing power. They're grabbing that market share, which they have very successfully done in the last two quarters. So again, at this juncture, I think if the stock were to fall because of these particular numbers, knowing the fact that upcoming quarters will be a lot better in terms of the cost metrics, I think certainly this would be the one and only, I think, aviation stock, if at all one wants this sector in the portfolio to be played with. Bharti Infratel, uh, 284 now. Uh, Nurish, would you be a trader in Bharti Infratel or Bharti Airtel also for that matter? That's at about 307. So looking at Bharti Infratel, would, I would be more positive on Bharti Infratel wherein for the last three to six months, it had a resistance around 270 and we crossed above that, went to 300. And for the last six to eight sessions, we've been holding above that 275 mark. So expecting uh, a move to closer to 300 again. So with a stop loss at 273, 275. Mm. Parthiv, what did you make of Bharti Infotel's numbers? I think uh, certainly they were uh, positively uh, positive numbers in terms of uh, what they delivered. And I, my sense is, I think uh, the OPEX increment in terms of Bharti Airtel, I think that certainly helped, uh, I think, uh, the numbers. And especially in the margins front, I think coming uh, slightly higher than what the street was estimating. And I think this is a very clean business model. I think uh, this is a company which uh, delivers fantastic free cash flow generation, uh, does dole out a decent, a decent dividend payout. And I think in the tower industry, we have seen huge amount of consolidation. And I think this particular player is standing apart. And I think even one had fears that Vodafone Idea merger would put some pressure on uh, these incumbent uh, tower players. But it seems that's not really played out this particular quarter. Uh, the stock did had corrected uh, massively from its previous peak. And I think with these results, I think probably today we'll certainly see a decent up move. But I think it's a clean company and I think we are bullish on such businesses. The reason being that going ahead uh, with the advent of even 5G and now with the consolidation having taken place and the talks about the pricing power slowly and gradually coming back should bode well for such proxy businesses in the telecom sector. Jim, Financial is reacting to its numbers as well as the pre-open rate settle down. That stock is likely to start off as the top loser on the Nifty 500, 4.5% lower. Indigo follows closely behind, 3.5% lower. Pedilight, about a couple of percentage points lower as well. Naveen Florin uh, reacting to numbers, a very flat quarter down about a percent, percent and a half or thereabouts. Uh, anything which is gaining, uh, well, Ujjivan Financial remains uh, that counter which is moving up in trade. About a couple of percentage points are in trade. Brijesh? 
Is there a trade here? Ujjivan Financial Services, 290. See, uh, 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 yesterday it got close somewhere around 284. Now we are saying it has been trading at 290. But what I am been looking till the stock doesn't cross 294, there would be, it would be facing resistance on the higher side. But whereas on the downside it's been concerned, it has, in, it has a support at, uh, at uh, 278. So I'm looking stock trading somewhere around 278 to 294 in between that. Uh, anyhow, uh, if, uh, if we are able to press 294, then the stock can jump to the level of 308 to 310 zone. So uh, right now I would be avoiding, but if it trades somewhere uh, uh, 280 or say 282, then keep a stop of 278 and look for the target of uh, 294. All right, that's Ajivan Financial and the trade thereof. Uh, yes Bank reports its numbers in today's session and it's going to be an important number to watch out for. Expectations are going to be slightly more mixed bag for this one. Now Parthiv are at 200 now and we've got the announcement of uh, the successor to Rana Kapoor uh, that's going to happen from 1st to Feb onwards. You know, that's another critical aspect to watch out for. So is this uh, stock going to remain in focus for you? See, certainly, I think that's one key aspect to, uh, to the earnings, and eventually, I think uh, they already submitted uh, the name, but I think the street still is not aware of it. And uh, the once the name is out, I think certainly will be helpful in terms of the confidence coming back. And, and I think the talk is that either it could be an insider, say someone like Mr. Uh, Rajat Monga. I think then also I think the sentiments will be good because he understands his bank in and out. And my sense is that if at all it's somebody from outside, I think then probably the market will pencil in a fact that you know a couple of quarters could be very painful because I think generally a new guy from outside tends to clean up the balance sheet the way he or she wants it so I think uh, that will be an interesting element to watch out for but talking about this quarterly results I think the key element that the street would be watching out is what sort of divergence uh, will come out I think uh, this is a key uh, fear that generally street has for numbers of yes bank and I think uh, RBI I think always talks about this divergence fact for all the banks and in case of Yes Bank, uh, I hope it's not a very huge number which tends to scare the street and uh, again I think in terms of the commentary, this is a bank which has grown its advances by 30% and that's come on the back of all the QIP that they've done very successfully of billion dollars. Going ahead, the ability to raise funds for this bank is now getting very very challenging. So how they're going to maintain that growth rate is going to be a key concern. So these are the key aspects I think I would love to uh, hear post the uh, result season and uh, management commentary after which one could take a call on this talk. Okay, minutes away from market open. Let's tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. In big earnings today, Altratech may post a muted 2.5% realization growth, while Yes Bank may witness moderate loan growth. Higher provisioning may impact profits. And United Spirits post steady earnings but misses expectations due to weakness in popular segments. PDLI to miss estimates. Margins contracted more than expected on higher input costs. In key bulk deals, Norges Bank sells 2.6% stake in Hathaway Cable and Datacom. The company also announced disappointing earnings. Dena Bank has initiated the process to sell non-core assets after taking necessary approvals. Around 14 properties worth 463 crores have been identified as non-core assets. Grasim and Hindalco to remain in focus as Vodafone Idea plans to raise 25,000 crores via rights issue. Lastly, Persistent Systems will consider share buyback proposal on the 27th of January. It's maybe given a small leg up uh, to Persistent Systems, much needed. Let's see if this lasts or no. Okay, as we head into the business end of uh, the market open or the pre-open, actually the pre-open session is already done, but the last two and a half minutes of trade left, uh, Stocks which are going to come out with numbers uh, uh, would be important as well. Uh, Parthiv 3, and I would want you to pick up one that you would watch out for the most today. Biocon, Colgate or Sterlite Technologies? Uh, it would be Sterlite Technologies. Uh, my sense is that our numbers this quarter uh, could be slightly tepid as compared to the street consensus. But nonetheless, I think uh, all things are going on a strong footing for this company and their capacity utilization is at a very decent level. Uh, I would love to hear a talk about some sort of 
Capex. I think uh, this is one company where I think going ahead, there is, seems to be a sustainable story in terms of the fiber demand. No doubt the fiber prices have certainly corrected. So what sort of cost cutting measures the company plans to take and what sort of uh, margin uh, band guidance they are giving, I think that's going to be key. The stock has massively corrected. So I think results will be an important, uh, I think, uh, trigger going ahead and also the con call in terms of the overall demand and the global growth story, which is Party, uh, question mark. If I can just come in, the Bloomberg estimates are about 1100 crores of top line. Uh, you think they will miss that and why so? Uh, I think this particular quarter, in terms of uh, some of the exports, I think uh, especially the demand from the Chinese markets, uh, I believe there's some sort of tepidness. And it will be interesting to see even in terms of the pricing power, because I think we've seen a quarter-on-quarter -quarter correction in terms of the fiber prices. So that's a key reason why I feel that they might miss slightly on the top line along with the margins. But I think going ahead, uh, what I feel is that, you know, their commentary in terms of further capex, I think that's what's going to drive the story. But I think we are not negative on the stock. Any sort of declines post results, I think we would be bullish to buy on the stock. Okay. We've got one minute left to go for market opening. Time now to bring in our technical experts and their top calls. I'll start off with you, Brijesh, first. What's going to be your top call of the day? Uh, a pattern at one can look out, uh, 224 or below that one can look out to buy this counter with the stop loss of 219 and pay for the target of 232, 234. Time frame to hold this counter would be 122 trading session. Okay. Uh, Nuresh, okay. what about your top call? Uh, that would be a buy on access thing with a stop loss at 49 and a target price of 670. Sorry, I missed that call. Ac access bank, did you say, Nuresh? Yeah. Okay, so you would go along on an access bank. Uh, in the session today. So those are the couple of ideas from our technical experts. Uh, Nuresh, we'll let you go on that note. Thanks so much for joining in today. Brijesh, just maybe stay on if you can for just an opening thought post-market open. And Parthiv, uh, one more question to you before we wrap up, uh, but just stay on. Uh, this is how the markets are likely to start off today. Remember, a mild tick of green anticipated, the question mark only is can we build on from there or the last hour weakness of trade yesterday will come in to bite us. For now, very, very flat, uh, hardly any movement actually. So ab lying absolutely flat, even for the Nifty Bank, just about five points. Actually, it's just completely flattened out. Uh, I, I doubt that the, I mean, I'm guessing the mid caps and the small caps do have a flattish move. So about a quarter of a percent and a 0.13 percent. So, well, no big moves on the indices. None were anticipated, but no big moves nevertheless. Let's talk about the top gainers and losers. Bharti Infratel, about a couple of percentage points. So that starts off on a positive note in the session today. There's a bit of gain in Yes Bank ahead of the numbers. Um, strength uh, in TCS after the weakness that we saw yesterday. HUL has some gains too, some strength for HCL Tech, Bajaj Finance, etc. But even Stevens for the market breadth, almost even Stevens between the gainers and the losers. Maybe the greens have a bit of an edge, but that's just uh, a very, very flattish moves on both of these rows. What's correcting? Well, again, not too much. Infosys continues to correct, even though TCS has bounced back. Tata Motors about a couple of percentage points, my, or rather a percentage point. Mahindra and Mahindra continues to remain weak. So those are a couple of names to watch out for as well. I think the standout, if any, is that uh, Bharti Infra is in the green and ITC is bounced back from the weakness that was exhibiting in trade yesterday. We'll actually talk about that within the stocks in focus as well because ITC certainly remains there. But let's uh, first, just a couple of trends that I want to highlight from amongst the newsmakers and the market movers in the session of possible market moves. Firstly, the results impact being seen in both USL as well as Pidilite. Uh, 3% lower for Pidilite, not a slam dunk, uh, because the markets would want to believe that the margin miss could be resurrected in the next quarter, but 3% lower nevertheless. United Spirits about a percent and a half. A bit of a contrast in results between Radico Khaitan as well as United Spirits. Uh, yesterday's top uh, losers, ITC bounces back. ICSF Pru bounces back a little bit. HDFC Live remains under pressure. Maybe the valuation uh, up value expensive valuations weighing in on this one but i see approved 11 percent downtick yesterday a bit of an uptick in the session today not bad ahead of the numbers two or three important stocks to monitor biocon starlight tech colgate each of these lying absolutely flat maybe now what are you spotting well, we start off first uh, with uh, Nujivan financial we spoke about that one so that's up about uh, three percent in the session this uh, uh, morning uh, some respite coming back into Obra Realty post their numbers. So that's giving you a 3% bump up in the session right now. Vodafone idea and the fundraising activity after yesterday's move in the fag end of trade. 
today's session another three and a half percent gained on the counter info edges the other one two and a half percent higher equitas holdings is up about two and a half percent uh should see what jm financial is doing um post numbers as well spoke about that one two percent lower um the likes of ashreen and sugar one and a half percent higher symphony one and a half percent higher uh, idbi bank is up one and a half percent power grid is up one and a half percent ICICI Pro, uh, you highlighted that one, that too is up about a percent and a half. Bakrangi moves up, but not to that great an extent, just about three quarters of a percent. J. Kumar Infra, uh, they've got the likes of a Raymond, Havel's post numbers, did well, it carries on this good move, about seven tenths of a percent higher. And uh, Jindal Stainless, uh, that's up about seven tenths of a percent right now. Overall, a market breadth at this juncture that looks slightly more positive, actually more even keel. Uh, but with a slight positive bias, that's what you've got on the market prep, the nifty mid cap and the small cap indices lying flat as well, just a quarter of a percent or so higher in the session right now. Yeah. Uh, Brijesh, uh, just one stock uh, that stands out for me, Mahindra and Mahindra 690 lower in the session again today. Is there a trade here? Mahindra, Mahindra has been concerned. Uh, the stock was has, has a strong support at 670, 672 zone. Right now, if someone wants to go for a short side, then keep a stop loss of 708 and look for the target of uh, uh, 670. But if someone has a view of our investment point of view, definitely this stock uh, uh, would be outperforming because the previous swing lows are still been holding on. So if anyhow, if we trade somewhere on 670 or below that, one can look out to buy this counter with us uh, with us uh, with the target of uh, 820 and downside as a stop loss of 635. Okay, got that. Uh, Parthiv, just one last word from you as well. Uh, any any particular stock that we should keep an eye out on? Even so far, I think on the show, I've always recommended stocks with a very long term view, I think three to five year time horizon and all uh, blue chip sort of names with quality management, quality balance sheet. And today, again, I think in this market, it's very difficult to find out such uh, standout names, but uh, not at the risk of repeating anything. But I think uh, 3M India is a stock where I feel that, uh, yes, one will always argue it's an MNC pedigree stock being very, very expensive. But now why I like this stock and not that I'm saying that one should go ahead and just buy all your quantities. It's a great stock to have an equity SIP sort of a strategy for at least next one or two years. In next one or two years, my sense is anyone who seriously wants to own this stock should buy all its quantity. Uh, the reason being that of late, I think there's a sense of urgency from this management to bet heavily on the Indian growth story. And I think they are talking currently about a capex of around 500 crores. There's also talk of some inorganic growth opportunity. And I think all the products that they've launched, I think niche segments they are into they are going to scale up well volume growth is going to be great uh, yes one really would love to see the dividend payout starting to roll out but i think this is a great company which is time corrected and it could still time correct over the next one year but post which i think all the things that the management is doing we are very upbeat to buy an mnc pedigree like 3m in india available at a 20,000 crore sort of a market cap huge re-rating scope ahead over the next five seven years that uh, that's 3M India and that is Parthiv Spik. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate both of you taking out the time. Um, Brijesh as well as Parthiv. Moving on, we've got uh, another important market voice who's joining in right now. Chakli, Chakri Lokpriya is here with us. He's the Managing Director at TCG Asset Management. Chakri, thanks very much for taking out the time and good morning to you. Uh, we're in the midst of the earnings season and that's probably something that's going to take center stage uh, till the end of the season now. How has it shaped up for you so far? What has been the positive and negative surprises that you've seen? All right, I, th I think uh, we don't have his audio at this point. Uh, we'll try and patch that line with Chakri in just a few moments. But I want to quickly just look at uh, some of the movers then and uh, the price action as of now. So HCL Tech now, that's up at uh, 951, seven tenths of a percent higher. In fact, should pull up emphasis. The stock uh, finally in yesterday's session saw a move towards 900. Um, after coming and trading closer to about 850, 860 or levels just a few months, a few days ago from levels of closer to 1100. So the stock has actually seen a big, sharp, steep drop from there 
that was during the buyback time. Post that, some amount of interest is coming back in, but still uh, not as much. Mid-cap IT as a pocket is something that has really uh, underperformed some of the larger names. And the larger names of late recently, post the numbers, have shown what they can do. But again, like we've been highlighting, it's that resistance that comes in at that 100-day moving average for Nifty IT and whether or not it can surpass that going forward. Uh, ITC one and a half percent higher, so there is a comeback from yesterday's drop of about four, four and a half odd percent. Overall consensus, uh, it met the consensus view in terms of their earnings performances, but probably uh, a, a sub nine percent EBIT growth on the cigarette business side was something that uh, could have triggered a little bit of a negative connotation to the stock price. Aside from that, uh, nothing much is happening. Volumes are still stable, about four, four and a half odd million shares on ITC. You know the other one, Devina, you, you've been talking about Vodafone idea. That one had that brief spike in trade when the news came out. It's up about 2.5% in the session today as well. Oberoi, um, the reactions to numbers notwithstanding, it's still up about a couple of percentage points. Uh, you already spoke about the big boy ITC. I somehow am stuck on pity light with uh, the crack that has happened. Just thinking though, that yes, expensive stock, but the concern if it is the margins, then the margins will stand to recover uh, when the next quarter numbers come out, simply because of the average price of crude and the crude derivatives would have come off uh, in this compared to the uh, previous ones. So, well, bit light too could be an interesting one to monitor. Today. But that aside, it's a very, very flat day for the market, so nothing much happening. But speaking of big voices, Anand Mahindra says that there is a need to be seen as a local player and that's prompted m and to set up assembly lines in new geographies like the US and South Africa. Listen in to a slice of that special conversation from Davos. Were we disappointed last year? Yes, the entire industry was. It's all had by now that, we, that the festival sales belied our expectations. So we were hoping for a really robust kicker in the festival season. I won't even go over why they may not have happened. In hindsight, it's, you know, you have many, many reasons. But it'll be interesting to know how you read the situation because then it'll give us a sense of some of those reasons. I, I, you that know, it, look, it was, it was the fact that there was a rate hike. It was the fact that there was the, the, the monsoon didn't turn out to be as good as one hoped. There were the state elections. All these things are trotted out. At the end of the day, it all translates into poor sentiment of the consumer. Okay. <clears throat> And we are hoping that that sentiment will revive next year, I mean the next year, this year. We are, uh, in, the, in the months to come, I'm a great believer that there is a huge pent-up demand that is waiting to come out. Will it come out before the elections? Again, I don't know. I'm a perpetual student like all of us of the Indian psyche and how it behaves. But you never know. You know, we launched this Java bike, for example. And it sold out. So, Tell me there's a paucity in demand. We had to announce that. But we it's a very work. different, very positioned category. You know, I you're, think a lot of business is going to be like that. <clears throat> it's going to be about differentiation, about brands, about... It always the, has been, right? Hasn't that always been your mantra? It's going to be even more our mantra, but I'm saying more and more, if you look at the millennial nature, hmm. millennials want brands that speak to them directly, that have meaning for them, whatever the narrative. They want special narratives. So in that sense, not just us, but even mass market companies are going to have to find ways to segment. And all I'm saying is that we are taking, yes, just one segment. But I'm saying there is there is capacity. These are not cheap bikes. So people just, uh, when they find the right narrative, there is money. So I hope 2019 will be the year when the money comes out. Well, let's see if it does. And I hope 2019 is not the year when the money comes out of the equity markets because that certainly seems to be the case right now. Lying very, very flat. Uh, uh, what I mean is over the course of the last few days, they've been lying very, very flat, uh, the moves that we have had, uh, resistance at the upsides. Individual stocks, Ujjivan Financial now up 4% in trade. So strong show by that one. Uh, that is strength in Symphony up about 3%. Uh, Equitas, uh, on the back of maybe Ujjivan's numbers, is up about 2.5%, so that seems to be doing okay. But I think the move in Radigo, Khaitan and United Spirits is interesting. USL, Radigo is up on another 2.5% after the move yesterday. USL, about a percent and a half lower. Uh, dichotomy in the kind of gross margins, and maybe that has hurt these companies as well. But I'm told Chakri Lokpri is back, and I think he was in the midst of giving an answer to us. Yeah, with regards to earnings, only in, in where exactly were the positive and the negative surprises that he's seen. And since we were on the topic 
of uh, you know radical and uh, 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 United, United Spirits, Spirits did within this pocket. And now, Chakri, uh, what's uh, the gauge like in terms of earnings performances? Yeah, earnings have actually uh, kind of been along expected lines, which is commodity costs in the have been higher, and therefore it has affected the margin. And this is a trend which is being seen across sectors, whether it's consumer, industrial, name it. Uh, volumes have been okay, but uh, the commodity pricing pressure has not been able to pass on to the consumer, which indicates a lack of pricing pressure and a weak demand. So I think that is a trend that we are likely to continue to see, at least in this quarter's result, with commodity prices coming down. And commodity is a cross quarter, and I think metal, oil, related with oil, which impact the SMC, industry, et cetera, are all coming down sharp. And therefore, the earnings will revive, or rather the margins will look better in the coming quarter. Mm. Um. Chakri, the last few days, some of the consumer durable names seem to have uh, caught a bit of excitement. None of the results have come out thus far but for Havels. But is it the performance of Havels that is leading to a Voltas, a Symphony and the others uh, run up in ahead of their numbers? And what's their view on this pocket? If you look at the data segment, they are taking exactly the same uh, figures, such as commodity costs. Commodities of all types uh, were high last year and uh, not in last quarter not them. And they're also very well friends. They're from the sort of plan, their inventory, or their raw materials, or their selling price properly. And second, this is an industry which is continuing to see very strong price competition, including the table consumers. You see that tables actually have not been able to improve margins that much. Now, uh, paying 40 times for tables is a good company, all that, but I see little value in trying to buy a company at 40 times. And therefore, the companies like Walter also are unlikely to see a meaningful increase in stock prices in the coming couple of quarters because of the mm. uh, Within the consumer space, I mean, we, and, and when we're talking about uh, names like Pidilite, which reported numbers, disappointing the street, but their valuations also, while they're lofty, uh, they really command a heavy premium, and therefore they need to deliver. But do you see this as an aberration, or probably this could mean uh, some uncertainty for the medium-term earnings outlook? Uh, I lost the first part of your question. Please repeat. I was talking about consumption names and how they need to deliver because of the steep earnings, uh, steep valuations that they command, and how they actually need to really meet and beat the street expectations when they report numbers. I'm uh, with reference to Pidilite that reported numbers and disappointed on the margins. Indeed, you know, Pidilite is, again, a good example of, uh, you could see that industrial segment uh, was lower than their consumer segment. And in both cases, their margins are not strong in other words, margins actually fell down. So again, this backdrop, it's a delegative of both, you know, the end industry, whether it's the real estate industry, are all forms of consumption industry, which are still big. And companies like the will benefit only if demand picks up, and these are still early days, because we don't see demand picking up yet. Mm -hmm. OK. Chakri, uh, looking at uh, you know the kickoff with some of the pharma names when they start coming out with their earnings performances, today being Biocon, well, what is the anticipation from the larger names? I think a couple of the large names, the only Dr. Reddy, but there's any really degree of uh, an anticipation that the earnings will be really uh, uh, And this is more individual specific. It depends upon the number of product launches that they have going forward. And from that perspective, I think both Urban and even Dr. Reddy are well placed. But outside of that, you would, uh, the sector will benefit from a reduced pricing pressure, which they have faced from the U.S. If you look at the generic pricing price of negotiations with the U.S. PBMs and the healthcare industry, those are kind of keys which are good news incrementally for the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, Chakri, uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much uh, for taking the time out and joining us today. Look forward to having you in our studios the next time. It's always better talking to you out here. But thanks so much for joining in today. Indeed, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.
All right, that's the view from Chakri Lokpriya. As we speak, though, uh, while we would have thought that the markets could have started off okay, uh, they're not bad, but we're a quarter of a percent lower, and this is what we were for most part of the trading day yesterday before the last half an hour. Let's wait and watch what happens. Uh, the world markets were not a bad place, so maybe Europe will not play uh, the tricks that it played yesterday. So uh, let's, let's wait and watch. But uh, time now for a break, really. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, uh, we come back from the break. A very special conversation from Davos with Sunil Bharti Mittal of Bharti Enterprises on why he thinks that the telecom hemorrhage will stop this year. And then we talk about the metal space with Rakesh Arora of Go India Advisors. Uh, that's coming up at 9.45, so stay tuned for that as well.